Screen recording can be useful for a variety of purposes, such as creating tutorials, sharing your screen with others, explaining something in more detail, or creating videos for social media. In this quick tutorial, I'll show you one of the simplest ways to record a video of your screen for free using the snipping tool in Windows 11. The snipping tool has been around for a while. It allows you to take screenshots or still images of your display, but recently it has been upgraded to allow you to record videos of your screen. Let's take a look at how to use it. To get started, search for snipping tool in the start menu. I recommend pinning this tool to the taskbar or the start menu to make it faster to launch next time since there is not a keyboard shortcut for it. Once the snipping tool is open, click on the video icon to toggle to recording video. Press the new button to initiate the recording mode, then drag the cursor to draw a box which will allow you to select the display and the area of the display you'd like to record. You can adjust the handles to make a more precise selection. Cropping like this can be useful to keep the video focused on a certain area or to protect your privacy by hiding content you don't want to show. Click again if you'd like to reset the selection. You can also cancel with the X, or you can start the recording with the Start button. Once the recording begins, you can now perform the actions you want to record. You can use the Pause button to pause the recording, but don't forget to unpause before you resume. There is also a Delete button if you want to start over without saving the current recording. Here's a pro tip. While the snipping tool does not offer a spotlight or cursor highlighting mode, you can add those using Microsoft Power Toys, which is a free add-on for Windows 11. Check out my video on that if you'd like to learn more. When you're finished recording, click on the Stop button. Depending on the settings you choose for the snipping tool, you can automatically or manually save the video. I've chosen to manually save it so that I can choose where to save my recordings. By default, this is the Videos folder. As you can see, I can play this video back and it shows me everything I recorded. I can either use this video as is, or if it needs more work, I can edit it with a free video application like ClipChamp or something more advanced like Adobe Premiere Pro. I have tutorials for both of those if you'd like to learn more. So who is this feature for? I'd say this feature is for non-professionals who wanna capture actions on their screen, but don't need to add live or synchronized audio. This app is very simple with minimal features. That might be great for users who are not technical and don't wanna bother with settings and video editing best practices. I wouldn't say it's good for presentations because it only supports video capture, but for recording short clips that you'll add to a composition, it might be okay. If I inspect one of the files, I get an MP4 video that matches the resolution of the display I had recorded. The dimensions will vary if you chose to crop off some of your display. The frame rate is only 30 frames per second, and I don't see any option to change that to 60, which would give me smoother recording, but would produce a larger file. I also do not have control over the bit rate of the video, which is on the lower end. A higher bit rate might capture more detail in images and movement. There's also the consideration that you'll be compressing your video again when you upload it to a platform like YouTube. This may further reduce the video quality. It's better to upload higher quality video than lower quality video that is overly compressed. I don't see any indication that there is a cap on how long of a video you can record. I suppose your storage drive is probably the only limit. This level of video output is decent, but if you're aiming for professional quality video, let's say for courses or YouTube videos, you'd be better off using OBS Studio. It's free, and it offers you higher bit rates, a custom FPS, audio recording, and much more. While I'm mentioning audio recording, at this point, the snipping tool does not support audio capture. That limits what you can do with this tool a lot, since half of your presentation will be the audio. You can capture the audio separately, but that requires a separate device that you'd have to synchronize with your computer. Normally, audio is easy to synchronize to video by aligning the audio waveforms, but since the snipping tool cannot capture audio, it's much more difficult. As far as recording something like an art or design process, I think the visual quality is good enough, but if you wanted more control over the visual quality in other settings, you'd want to use OBS Studio. I'd say if you are new to screen recording, start with the snipping tool, and if you find the limitations are holding you back, upgrade to OBS Studio. 
Sure, it's more complex, but it's not terribly difficult to use once you get over the hump of setting it up. I have a tutorial you can watch about capturing audio and video if you'd like to learn more. That's all for this video. Be sure to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials for content creators like yourself. Thanks for watching and stay creative.